What's going on guys? The New Jersey Devils made a couple trades in NHL today. Honestly, when I saw the names they traded, I didn't think I was going to make a video. They traded Andy Green to the Islanders and Blake Coleman to the Tampa Bay Lightning. But when I saw the return they got for Blake Coleman, I felt like I had to make this video as, in my eyes, like, they got a King's Ransom. Coleman, I think, is a solid player. He's got like 30 points right now in 50 games, 20 goals, good on the PK, good two-way guy, good contract. But I just feel like they got a huge return for him. So we'll see, you know, how that trade worked in game. As I already mentioned, uh, Devils here trading Andy Green and Blake Coleman. So we're gonna start with the Blake Coleman trade. I'll also take a look at the Andy Green one. So 27 years old, 81 overall. I feel like he's a solid, you know, third line center on most good teams, second liner on a bad team. Again, good contract, 1.8 million for two more years there. Um, again, you're a good two-way guy, you guys can see. Defensive awareness, 84, pretty fast. Actually, I feel like he should be quicker than he's shown in game right there, 85 speed. He's kind of like just your typical all-around solid third-line guy, which is why I feel like this price is kind of crazy. This price is somebody you'd think would come into your top six and really be a big impact on the team, where for Tampa Bay, they already have a pretty solid top six. I definitely see Coleman being a third-liner. So in return for Blake Coleman, the Devils got Nolan Foote and Vancouver's first-round pick, which Tampa Bay, of course, got in the JT Miller trade. And Nolan Foote, Tampa Bay literally just drafted a first-round pick last year. You can, As you can see here, 18 years old, 64 overall, medium top six. 27th pick in 2019 so they're essentially getting two first round picks for Blake Coleman which seems insane like if you compare it to the Taylor Hall trade they got Nick Merkley who I think is a solid prospect you could probably argue could be better than Nolan Foote probably is right now but uh, Nolan Foote could be better in the future they actually both played for Kelowna which is kind of cool of you of course just did the Kelowna alumni video and then they got the first round pick and I think they have potential for a second first round pick if Arizona wins a playoff series or Hall resigns one of those two things so like, there's a chance this trade basically returns the same as Taylor Hall, which I don't know if that tells you Hall didn't get enough or Blake Coleman's getting way more than he should. I feel like a bit of a mix of both, but as you can see here, Vancouver's first round pick actually worth quite a bit as in-game. I think Vancouver's like a hopeful, even though in real life, pretty much going to be in the playoffs, which means the 2020 first round pick will be in the 20s. Now, there is a condition on this pick. If Vancouver misses the playoffs this year, it actually becomes a 2021 first round pick with no conditions. So if I'm the Devils, I actually hope Vancouver misses. They hold on to their 2021st, and then 2021, you hope they miss again. It becomes a lottery pick or whatever, because uh, if they make it this year and it's the 2020 pick, there's no chance of it being an early pick. But yeah, so right here you can see um, the Devils just have no chance of getting Nolan Foote in the first rounder for Blake Coleman. Uh, the value is so far on Dev base side. It's on medium trade difficulty, even if it was on easy. I feel like there's no way this goes through. So yeah, trade rejected. But like I said, the Devils actually made a couple trades today. Also traded their captain, Andy Green, uh, for David Quinville and a second round pick with the Islanders. I feel like Quinville is pretty much just there for a roster spot. But honestly, a second round pick in return for Andy Green, I think is really solid. Islanders, of course, is adding some defensive depth. And even a veteran on that team, I think, probably helped him out in the playoffs. So Andy Green here, 36 years old, 80 overall. One year left at $5 million. I've actually boosted him to an 80. Most of the time in game, he's a 78 with EA's ratings, which... Is just not high enough. He should be an 80 overall defenseman. I think I improved like basically just all his defensive stats, maybe a bit physical as he's not the most offensive guy, but he's kind of like a solid defensive defenseman. So a second round pick 2021, I think is honestly a really good return for Andy Green, who's pretty much a strictly rental. I doubt he's going to resign with the Islanders. He could honestly potentially even retire. He's getting up there in age. Was he like 36? I think it showed. I'll have to double check that. And then Quimble, like I said, I think just a roster spot. 21 years old, 65 overall, high HL top 2D here. Um, was he a seventh round pick? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's just there as Islanders are at the max 50 out of 50 And I want to take a look here. So yeah, Green's 36 Honestly, I think there is a good shot. Maybe he retires into this year If not, maybe like one more year signs the contender tries to go for the cup But even this one here you can see Devils making out really well I think Green's got like half the value maybe a third of the value the Islanders are giving up here We'll try this trade and yeah trade is rejected. What's kind of crazy too is I think that Green and Coleman, or for sure Green because he's a rental player, would actually have less value if we did this trade at the deadline because, you know, players' value goes down. So that just kind of tells you how much, you know, teams are kind of overpaying right now. Especially in years past, like the deadline, you could get some steals on rental players where it seems to be the opposite this year. Teams seem to be overpaying. So I'm curious to see what other trades go down here. But I'm also try this trade from the Tampa Bay Lightning's perspective. Obviously, it's going to go through, but we'll just, you know, confirm. And before I show you guys the Devils lines, I wanted to first show you the Islanders' defensive depth. For me, like, they're definitely, you know, defense by committee. No real superstar. If anyone, I think it'd be Polak, who I think is probably underrated. He's 83. 
I feel like he should probably be at least an 84, equal to Letty, maybe even 85. Um, Hickey's 82 in the AHL. You got Taze, Boychuk, Green, of course, is trade for Dobson, Mayfield, Pellich. So um, definitely if any injuries happen, whatever, they have tons of guys who can fill in different spots. And the Islanders have, I think, the lowest or one of the lowest uh, goals against in the NHL. So adding any green should just make them, you know, an even better defensive team. And as you can see here, the Devils team stats should be builder. Obviously, trading away two roster players isn't going to improve that. So take a look at the Devils lineup here. Honestly, I kind of feel bad for Devils fans who looks like they're going into another rebuild after a kind of restarting one a few years ago. Had one playoff appearance. Unfortunately, didn't get out of the first round. And I mean, looking at the forwards here, I feel like, you know, they have a good amount of depth. They definitely have like a decent bottom six. You know, Zajac, Wood, Zaka, Bockfist. And they're all relatively young, I'd say, aside from Zajac. It's just they really have no kind of superstar forwards. Obviously, they did have Taylor Hall trade him away. But... I mean, I think for them, the big thing is going to be whether or not Hishier and Hughes can develop into that kind of one-two punch. Not really Crosby malkin esque but still, I feel like the best comparison I can make is probably Philadelphia, where they have Giroud and Kachiri as their one-two punch. I know Giroud does sometimes play wing, but uh, the Devils could have Hughes be their Giroud, get a ton of points. Hishier also contributes with points, but a really good two-way center, similar to Kachiri. And with that, you know, the Flyers sometimes in the playoffs, sometimes not. And I mean, that's probably honestly high end for Hughes and Hishier, so... Really, the Devils, I think, still need to add some forwards. And then if you look at their defense, too, the top four shouldn't be too bad. Butcher, Subban, Severson, and Vatanen. Unfortunately, Subban's really regressed since joining the Devils. I'm not really sure why, to be honest. Butcher's more of an offensive guy. Same with Vatanen, even kind of Severson. Uh, the bottom pair there, I think, is fine. Carrick and Mueller. So probably the biggest X factor of the Devils is goaltending. Blackwood's a decent young goaltender, but um, he hasn't really proven himself to be an everyday NHL starter. So... Yeah, the Devils kind of need work all throughout the lineup, and luckily for them, they just made two sick trades, which should definitely help out, you know, getting that process started. And so not trying to Coleman trade from the Lightning's perspective. As you can see there, Coleman's not on the block, but they do have Andy Green on the block, they just traded, also Vatnin and Subban. And one other thing I wanted to point out too with this trade that kind of sucks, actually, is the fact that they're splitting up the Foot brothers. They literally just drafted, you know, Nolan Foot to join his brother, and now they're trading him away. Played together in Kelowna, you know, could have played together in Tampa, which I thought would have been pretty cool whenever brothers, you know, play on the same team, but... Fortunately, that's not going to happen, and I mean, for Tampa, like I said, um, they get Coleman, who should be, you know, a good addition to that third line, playing with Sorelli, and then the Devils, of course, get a really nice haul, just a first-round pick, former first-round prospect from literally the last year, like, kind of insane, I think, for Coleman, so even on hard difficulty, yeah, this trade still goes through, like, I don't know how it went in. And similar to New Jersey, guys, Tampa Bay had champion team stats before the trade, obviously adding Coleman. They're not going to go down. Now, I actually saw some um, Vegas odds saying that Tampa Bay currently had the best chance of winning the Stanley Cup. And this trade makes them even heavier favorites. And it feels like the last three or four years, they've been, you know, the number one favorite, haven't been able to get it done. And again, like you look at their team just on paper, I feel like they have the best team in the NHL. With the Coleman trade, they could actually rock Stamkos, Point, Kucherov, just their three best players on that first line, which apparently they've actually been doing. And I mean, that's just such a sick first line. Um, second line there, you got Kloran, Sorelli, and Palat. I didn't actually realize Sorelli was playing second line now because of, you know, the top-heavy first line. Third line, still very solid now. You got Gord, Coleman, Johnson, Maroon, Paquette, Joseph on the fourth line. Like, they just have so much depth. They got for Hag in the AHL. Uh, defensively here, I know McDonough's injured right now, but once he's back, you got Henry McDonough, Ruda Surchev, Coburn, Shankirk. Of course, they got Vasilevsky in net. I mean, on paper, I feel like... Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh, Washington, St. Louis, um, Toronto even, I think. Uh, those are probably like the top five teams in my mind, again, on paper. And of those five, I feel like Tampa Bay is probably, again, number one. So, you know, hopefully for Tampa's sake, they don't get swept again. I feel kind of bad, but um, they just look so, so good. So I'll be curious to see if they do any more moves because... It's going to be tough, honestly, to improve that roster more than, you know, they already have. Also, real quick, I just want to show you Coleman in the Tampa Bay jersey. Um, let's see here. So, probably, I don't even know if that's a real game face or not. It might be. It's tough to tell with the helmet on. Uh, number 20, Coleman, Tampa Bay. Doesn't look too bad. But that's going to be it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, the trade sims in the comments section. Let me know which team you think won. On Twitter, most people say, you know, the Devils won. But some people think it was actually a pretty fair trade. So, curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Again, that's it, though, for this one. If you did enjoy it, leave a thumbs up. Hopefully you guys subscribe. Have a nice day. Goodbye.